Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson, and this is Maker Size. In this episode, we'll be boring the tailstock. In part 11, we took a look at the lead screw drivetrain, and that'll be very helpful in this process of boring the tailstock. First I disassembled the cross slide and the apron and then I removed the tailstock and the carriage. That way I could put the tailstock on first and have the carriage on the right side of the tailstock. And that's helpful because that allows me to move the tailstock along the bed uh, using the lead screw. I have pretty much two spindles that I've been using, and they're both 5 8 inch cold drawn steel rod. The one spindle has the boring bar, and the other spindle has my turning mandrels. I turned down points on the other end of these spindles, and that way I didn't have to use extra stock for centers for the lathe. I was disassembling the entire headstock to swap out the spindles, but eventually I discovered that I could just slide it through much easier. I release project videos early to MakerSize email subscribers. If you want early access, go to makersize.com slash sign up. The core left a nice hole down the center of the tailstock. However, it was still a little bit too tight to get the 5 8 inch boring bar through. So what I had to do was enlarge it with the drill. I checked the depth of the cutter in the boring bar and then I pushed the tailstock into it by hand and that gave me just enough clearance that I could begin cutting the rest of the tailstock. The book calls for attaching the carriage to the tailstock using a bracket and some screws. I just used some zip ties. There were some drawbacks to that, but it was definitely a lot quicker than fabricating a bracket. The drawback to using the zip ties is that it created a torque on the tailstock during this boring operation. So the inside of the tailstock is, I guess, bored about a thousand low from the headstock end. During this process, I adjusted the depth of the cutter in the boring bar using the same method that I described in part six of this series. The first pass through the tailstock, I did by hand using the lead screw. The lead screw drivetrain really made boring this tailstock much quicker. After I got it close to the final diameter of three quarters of an inch, I changed the speed of the cutter by moving the belt over in the step pulleys. Once I had the tailstock bored to three quarters of an inch, I gauged it using a piece of three quarter inch cold drawn steel. I could tell there was a little bit of hesitation trying to push this through the tailstock. I use this gauge rod as a crude reamer. I cut a slot in the end using a hacksaw and then I filed down one of the corners. That allowed me to be able to rotate and take off just a little bit of material on the inside of the tailstock as I pushed this reamer through.
I installed 3 quarter inch to 5 8 inch bronze bushings on either end of the tailstock. That way it would fit my 5 8 inch spindles. If you're enjoying this series, consider supporting me on Patreon. Liking, commenting, and sharing this video also helps a lot. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. Thanks for watching.